hi all we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday um, and start looking at families of diagonal lines and the intercept of those lines i'm just going to start very briefly by recapping what we did yesterday's lesson which was having a look at the relationship y equals x so the way we did this was particularly unstructured to start off with we just listed some coordinates that had the same values what I'm going to do today, just to make things easier as we go on, is to develop that structure and to put it into a table. So I'm going to start by just picking some coordinates to put into my table that are x values. Preferably something that is already on this axis. I'm going to pick a zero and stick it in the middle of my table for now because I think that's always a nice place to start. And then I'm going to pick a positive and a negative number. So I'm going to go for negative 4 and a 2. This is just to give me some idea of what's happening either side of the y-axis and what's happening on the y-axis itself. This relationship's a nice and easy one. This one literally means that anything that I have in x is the same in the y. So my y-coordinates will be minus 4, 0 and 2 as well. So all I'm going to do is then plot those as coordinates. So this one, for example, will be minus 4, minus 4, just like we did yesterday. 0, 0, just like we did yesterday. And 2, 2, just like we did yesterday. If I was to plot those, negative 4, negative 4, 0, 0, and then 2, 2, I get something that looks like this. When I join those lines, those coordinates up, sorry, I get a line. That line is the line of y equals x. Okay, we did talk about this one yesterday, so it shouldn't come as any surprise that it is a diagonal which goes across one and up one every single box. Okay. What I'm going to do is change that relationship very slightly. Instead, I'm going to look at the relationship y equals x plus 1. I'm going to use the same y coordinates as before, so a 0 in the middle, and I'm going to go for minus 4 and 2. The only difference here is that now I'm looking at y is x plus 1 instead of y equals x. So I'm going to take negative 4 and I'm going to add 1. That's going to take me to negative 3. I'm going to be at 0 but I'm going to add 1 which is going to take me to 1. I'm going to go from 2 and add 1 to give me 3. Plotting these coordinates is slightly different. I'm going to end up with minus 4, minus 3, 0, but then going up to 1, and then 2, going up to 3. Not hugely different to what we've already seen. In that my line is now sloped, but it is looking slightly different. Can you pinpoint why? To help you out, here is the line that we drew for y equals x earlier on. I'm hoping you can see here that my line y equals x crosses through at this point 0, 0. But we've got this point 0, 1 where this one crosses. These two lines are perfectly the same distance from each other at all points. They are always one box in exactly away vertically and actually horizontally in this case um, to the line above it. This is because I've literally taken this graph and added one to every single one of the y coordinates. I have literally shifted it upwards by one. So this part of my graph is what has changed. We call this the y-intercept. The intercept being where we cross that line. So the y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. Okay, let's keep up. So, if we were looking at this graph here, this is one of the most common things that people get wrong. 
Annie has used a table to help her draw this graph, so she's done exactly what we did. She's picked some x coordinates, including a negative and a positive one, and then figured out what the y coordinate should be from there. She's then plotted a line. Unfortunately, Annie is wrong. It's a bit of a strange one because it's looking very much like she's done exactly the right thing here. But if we look very, very carefully at all of her um, coordinates, we can see that she has plotted them incorrectly. This bit is perfectly fine. She's adding two every single time and she's done it perfectly well. However, when she's come to transfer this to the graph, that's where those mistakes started to be made. Annie should have gone to negative two and stayed at zero. She should have gone zero and up to two. And she should have gone from one and up to three. Again, this is very like the y equals x line. So she could be thinking that her original line looked absolutely fine. It is a straight line, which is what we're after. And it does have something to do with two. But unfortunately, this is a positive two here. Which means that we need a positive two as our y intercept. This negative two is incorrect. We added to, not took it away. She's plotted her coordinates the wrong way around. She's plotted her minus 2 as a y and the 0 as the x. And so on and so on with her other point. We've just got to make sure that we remember that those coordinates go in the order of x and then y or it can change our graph totally. The second thing that people tend to do wrong again with the coordinates, is to give themselves a line that looks like this. Now actually, we can see this one very, very quickly because anything that is like this form should tell us that it's a straight line. This is not one single straight line. We actually have two separate ones that seem to be joined together at this point here. Can you see what Benny did wrong on this one? Again, if we look at those coordinates, we are taking one from x every single time. So actually these coordinates look pretty good so far. If we look at how they've been plotted, if we go to negative two, we should have gone down to negative three. And this was the mistake that was made in this one. Let's just check the others to make sure. We go across to one and then we stay there for zero. Across to three and up to two. So actually the graph should have looked something like this. Again, we could probably have told this was wrong very, very quickly by identifying the intercept of the graph here. The intercept of the graph is the bit that is not attached to that x. It's the plus or the minus after it. And so this minus one is where it should have gone through, but in the original line, it didn't do that. What we now want to do is try and make this a little bit more formal. So I've got five different lines here. I'm hoping that we might be able to see these a little bit more clearly uh, now I've uh, highlighted them all in different colours. What we're going to try and do is match those ones up to the relevant equation. All of these equations are very, very similar to each other. They all have x and then plus or minus a number. They are all very similar in the fact that they have got the same slope. These are what we call parallel lines. They are an equal distance apart and they will never ever meet. Because of that, these are a family of relationships because they will never meet, but they have that thing in common. Okay, so the thing that these have in common is their slope. But they are each different because they cross the axis or the y-axis at different places. Okay. We can actually then think about how we've talked about the equations and the relationships as well in the same and different way. 
the things that's the same is that every single one of them has an x. The line of y equals x is what it's actually asking us for, and we know that the line y equals x looks just like this. That x is the thing they've got in common. They also have the slope in common. They are all different because of the plus or minus something at the end of it. I'm going to call that thing an A. Hopefully we can see these a little bit more clearly if we were to compare them directly. So, looking at this first graph that we can see in pink here, not the one that I've just drawn on for y equals x, but this one here, we are crossing through at plus 1. This means that it's this equation that it matches with because it has a plus 1 after it. We can then do the same with the 2 crossing the y-axis at 2 means we are at x plus 2. And then looking at plus 3, that's this 3 just here. The negatives work in exactly the same way, but instead of moving upwards from our original y equals x line, we're going to be moving downwards to minus 1 here and to minus 2 here. My intercepts change because the x is our family, y equals x, but we are changing our intercept because of the numbers afterwards. So just to clarify, we've got that line y equals x. This is our family. They all look very similar because they have the same diagonal slope, but they cross at different points and those are the intercepts. Just to make us sound a little bit more mathematical, we're going to call that slope the gradient. The gradient literally means the slope of the line. It is just what we do as mathematicians, um, what we call it to make it sound more formal. So we don't talk about slope from this point onwards, we're going to talk about the gradient. So without drawing a table this time, I'm going to try and draw this. Uh, relationship of y equals x plus 4. So I'm going to do this without a table. So I'm going to identify the family that it comes from. We can see that just here. This is the y equals x family. And we know what this graph looks like because we've seen it lots of times today and yesterday. So I'm going to draw that line in first. So this is my line y equals x. So my graph is going to follow the same gradient as this one, but it is not going to go through that point. It's going to be a parallel line, so I'm going to want to keep the, my ruler at that, line, at that um, slope and move it upwards or downwards according to the rest of this equation. The thing that I'm interested in for this one in particular is this plus 4. This is my y-intercept. And so I'm going to have to be going through this point here. So I'm going to keep my ruler at the same slope and I'm going to move it upwards. And I'm going to connect all of the points that would be on this line. This one here is your line of y equals x plus 4. So we're going to use the same reasoning to help us with this next one. This time I've got my line, again, y equals x. I'm going to use this line to help me to figure out what the equation of the line would be if my intercept was 0, minus 3. So 0, minus 3 is this point here. I can draw this on, but actually at this point it's not going to help me too much to see it drawn. But let's have it just for being complete. This is my line of y equals x and then something else. And we've already said that this something else is related to the intercept. That intercept is at negative 3, so my line is going to be y equals x minus 3, because that is the intercept. This might be a good time to start thinking about what this actually means as an intercept in terms of those coordinates too. I know 
that this line goes through this coordinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the two. Okay. I'm going to substitute in for an x equals 0 and I'm hoping y is going to be negative 3. So y equals 0, take 3. That gives us negative 3 and this is where the intercept comes from. If I can substitute those coordinates in and get the result that I need, this is what's happening. This intercept is when x equals 0, just like we talked about yesterday, and then therefore gives me y is negative 3, because this relationship holds. This one again is very slightly different to what we've done before. This time I'm going to graph the relationship of y equals minus x minus 2. This is slightly different because my family for my graph is different. This is my family. The family this time is y equals minus x instead of y equals x. We did talk about this yesterday, but what I'm going to do is just recap that very quickly. My coordinates should be something along the lines of 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, etc, etc. And then we can have them in reverse. So if I have a negative x, I have a positive y, and so on. These coordinates make a very similar line to y equals x. It just slopes in the opposite direction, looking something like this this. So that's the family of lines that I'm looking at. What I now need to account for is this intercept. This y intercept this time is going to be at negative 2. So I'm going to be parallel to y is minus x and through this negative 2. That's going to give me a line that looks like so again, I've managed to do this without having drawn a table. And last but not least, if we were to look at this last question you were given in today's lesson, we are looking at drawing a graph of the family y equals minus x again. So that's this line here. This is our one that we drew before, y equals minus x minus 2, because we're still going for that negative 2. But instead of that, I want to be looking at something that goes through 0, pi. From yesterday's lesson, I'm hoping that we remember that pi is around 3.14 if we're doing it to two decimal places. So, pi is going to be at this point here on my y-axis, somewhere around there. Okay. So I want my line to go through that point. This is my y-intercept. Again, I'm going to keep my line being parallel to the ones we've seen before. And we should get something that looks like this. The only problem is that I'm asked what the relationship is here. We know that it belongs to the y equals x family. And we know that this part here, the extra part, is going to tell me my intercept. And this is a positive pi. So I'm just going to add pi. Apologies, very tiny error just at the end there. I needed to make sure that I put a minus in front of that x. So this is a y equals minus x plus pi. If you really wanted to, and like lots of mathematicians do, and you're a bit averse to having that negative at the beginning, you can put pi minus x as well. Either of those is valid. As usual, all you need to do now is make sure you're looking at the Hegarty Maths clips. Those are 206 and 207. Um, as usual, make sure you're doing that quiz, making sure it's marking it for you and you're getting something over 70% to make sure you truly understand it. If you need any help, you have got those online Hegarty videos as well as this one. Please feel free to give us an email if there are any major issues. Otherwise, stay safe and I'll see you for the next lesson.